Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing another Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires campaign review, this time covering Lewin Leonkur. So Lewin Leonkur starts off at Corone, which is where he's always started off, however his campaign is massively tricking the player, more so than it was previously. You see, you're poised to strike against the vampire accounts over here that have taken Longui, which is a settlement that you previously would have on turn 1 in Warhammer 1 and 2. However, if you do that, then a more important threat might be forgotten about. See, previously, on turn one, you were able to capture Marienburg. You'd start over here, you were at war with Marienburg, you'd capture Marienburg on turn one, and then on turn two, you'd take on Grung Zint and defeat them, you know, if you were playing optimally. Now, the benefits in that is that on turn two, you're going to get an event show up that causes minus 20 public order for 20 turns, it's called the Greenskin Incursion, unless you occupy a Greenskin Settlement. So if you head west over here and capture this settlement, you are about three turns away from getting over to here, which means you'll get there on turn four. Now, these guys here on turn one have no army, right? But you better believe they're going to have an army on turn four. In addition to that, they've got a garrison there. Now, if on turn one, instead of going over here, you stand over here and recruit and then strike here on turn two these guys here will only have a lord in there they won't have an army and you can very easily beat it and get rid of that event so you're tricked by the game into taking on the vampire accounts it is way more important to take this out so the game is tricking you right from the get-go there into making a really terrible strategic decision now in addition to that bretonian um core gameplay has kind of suffered a little bit in total War warhammer 3 namely in regard to tier 3 minor cities because in warhammer 1 2 and 2 and in the early days of immortal empires bretonia used to be able to automatically build walls as soon as a minor city got to tier 3. now even when a settlement has a garrison building you cannot build walls in minor cities now the problem is the way that the AI behaves. The AI is very cowardly in Total War Warhammer 3. They don't like engaging with your armies if it's even close to being a fair fight. What they much prefer is going for your minor cities, sacking it, raising it, whatever, causing you heartache by seeing your basically undefended settlements burned to the ground, and then running off and raiding or something like that. Um, and in Warhammer 3, your settlements just won't be able to defend themselves very easily because your garrisons are trash. They're mostly full of crappy Bretonian melee infantry which are some of the worst melee infantry in the game but there is a way around that because Bretonia doesn't suffer from supply lines so having smaller forces running around to deal with um to outmaneuver these sort of armies is kind of the way to deal with it you can leave a small army inside of your minor cities in order to repel some of these guys because you're not going to suffer from supply lines because they don't suffer from that now the bretonian army is a little bit tricky because they've got some terrible melee infantry which i don't recommend recruiting they've got some reasonable archers reasonably priced at least they can at least dish out damage and some of the best cavalry in the game now the problem is that cavalry is not a newbie unit to use you know if you're experienced with the game you can get a lot of value out of cavalry but the problem is, if you're new to the game, you'll oftentimes find cavalry to be one of the most frustrating unit in the game. Because oftentimes you'll notice they'll charge into the back of infantry units, they won't break them, they'll barely do any damage, and they'll get stuck. So knowing exactly when to cycle charge is something that requires a fair bit of, of experience. And knowing when to, you know, um, basically horse sandwich, when to collide two cavalry units into a single unit, again, something that requires experience. Having very mobile armies benefits uh, Bretonia. But this is something that newer players are probably not going to get their head around very early on. So it's not really a noob-friendly faction if you want to maximize their potential. You know, having a very standard army, their, their potential is reasonably low. So I think that newer players might be turned off by Bretonia. So in terms of Lewin Leonkur's campaign, in terms of recommending it or not recommending it, this is one that I personally like playing. But I have liked it more in Warhammer 1 and 2. So I don't like it as much in Warhammer 3. And it's something that I would issue a bit of caution before playing it for the first time. Because Bretonia is a bit of a tricky faction um, in terms of that. It's so something that you really probably shouldn't be playing on the higher difficulties if you're, if you're new to it. Because I think you'll not find it fun. And that's the most important thing is to have fun. Obviously if you're experienced with Bretonia, it, you can very easily handle legendary difficulty. But if you're new to Bretonia then I'd urge a little bit of caution and play on the lower difficulties with them. Otherwise, I think their campaign's not very fun. Um, one of the best things about Bretonia, though, is that it is now completely free. If you own 
Warhammer 3, you get Immortal Empires automatically, and you can download Bretonnia without owning Total War Warhammer 1. So, it's not a noob-friendly faction, but newer players can access it without having to pay, so it's no paywall for it. So, there's good and bad to Bretonnia, and you just have to make a judgement call whether it's for you. Overall, it's not really a campaign that I highly recommend, but I personally I reasonably enjoy Bretonnia. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Which legendary lord you'd like me to cover next? Appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time.